Right babes, Q and A. There's some questions in there for you. So this is a question from, I can't even say it, Glenn Freiberger. What a name. Freiberger. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and it says, on your next Q&A session, since we're all on lockdown and there's a limited amount of golf to talk about, I'd like to hear about your animals. Hmm. So just a bit of fun. So we'll talk, answer that one first. So, do you want, so well, there's one animal. Why don't you get him out? No, we've got the most important one, which is Bosin. Oh yeah, so we've got Bosun, who's our dog, um, and we call him Bosun because uh, we were both in the Navy. Bosun is a very military, Navy word, um, so we've called him Bosun because of that. And he is our little baby boy. Oh, there he is. And uh, there he is. Anybody's. So he's the most important animal we've got. Uh, we've got uh, Tommy, Thomas the Tank Engine. He's our little tortoise. <laughs> so, and he likes his back being scratched. So he's uh, two? Uh, three. He's three years old. Um, and he's to 120, possibly. How long? 120 years. Lifespan, they've got. Yeah, right. Um, and then we've got Drago. Is he awake? Yeah, <laughs> Grumpy. Grumpy Drago. And then we've got Drago. Drago, who's our bearded dragon. Um, he's four? Four or five? Yeah. Uh, and he's massive. How long, look how tall he is, how big he is. He's like, his tail is. It's just humongous, isn't it? So yes, we have him. Um, we've got the four chickens. We did have six, but two have sadly passed away. Um, and they are all named. We've got Julia, uh, who's named after nobody. We've got Sharon, who's named after my mum. Vanessa, who's named after Vicky's mum. And Margaret, who's named after Vicky's gran. So there are four chickens. They are egg producing chickens. And then we've got Rosie Bear, who stays at the shop, mainly because the dog doesn't like her. I don't think he likes that she can talk. Yeah, the dog doesn't like a talking parrot. Uh, second part of Glenn's question is, um, Dan Hendrickson's video stated you were working with him for lessons. Did your handicap go down after working with Dan? And what specifically, if anything, did you work on with Dan? Take care and stay safe. So, yeah, I went to Dan when I was off 17 handicap. Uh, that was probably about September last year. Initially started as a driver fitting and then turned into a six month journey, which is six months of three hour lessons. So I have three hours of lessons every month. Um, and we've mainly just been working on controlling loft for me because I'm, I can get a bit wafty. So we've just been con talking about controlling loft, slight changes to my swing to, to bring it more on plane. Um, and it's resulted in my, my handicap going down to 12, po probably I would say even lower. It's just I've not had the chance to play in competitions. So yes, dramatic difference in going for lessons with Dan. So this one's from Tony Coxon and that's on YouTube. It says, uh, how often do you practice chipping and putting and do you do any strength and flexibility to improve your game? Uh, I know you've got arthritis and all cheers. Uh, no, I don't. And that's probably why I'm off 12 is because I very rarely practice my chipping and putting. I think over the lockdown, I've taken the ball and the, a wedge down to the field twice, maybe three times. Um, and I haven't practiced my putting once, apart from for a silly video for one of Dan's uh, YouTube videos. Do I do any strength and flexibility work? Apart from sitting on the sofa. Well, that strengthens my back and my ass cheeks. No, he's really lazy, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Tony. Next question. Uh, what club, this one's from Paul Cartwright, what club are you a member of and have you played Big Bree? Uh, I'm a member of Whitsand Bay and no. So this one's from Cy Hawksby. Hi mate, what did it take to achieve your first 100 subscribers? 
Um, a lot it's of work. Friends, it's friends, yeah. <laughs> friends, family. Um, they will probably be your first five or six. It, it's just having a little bit of realization that unless you put out a video that's going to go viral instantly, you will slowly get videos and subscribers out there because because you're not going to get many views. YouTube won't push the video, so it won't get put in front of many people to to watch it. So it's just a case of sticking with it and understanding that your first few videos, first 10, 20 videos, may get very little traction and very little people watching it. Um, this one's from Andy Southall. What other sort of work do you do or have you done? Um, well, we were both in the Navy. I was in for 20 years. You were... 10. Vicky was in for 10 years. Um, and then she left the Navy in... 2017, 16, 17, 17. 2017, and now works for a company in Plymouth as an administration coordinator. Coordinator. <laughs> That's a really posh word for receptionist. We don't have a reception. I'm, I'm not a receptionist. Okay, it's a really posh word for a girl who works in an office. A posh word for paperwork engineer. Paperwork engineer. That's what she does. <laughs> Um, when I left the Navy, I started working in a, a vape shop that I owned and still own the company uh, jointly with a business partner, but that shop is now closed as a vape shop and opening as a golf shop. Um, so that will be after lockdown what I'll be doing. Thank you for your question. Uh, this is quite a long question. We'll ask your question first. This is from Baz on YouTube. Uh, to the ham queen, <laughs> golf never interested you never played it does interest me i ask you questions all the time but the fact is i'd just be too good at it <laughs> i'd show everyone off there'd be birdies and bogeys all over the place if i got on the course so i just there's no point there's just no point in you playing is it because no. like you you'd start and you'd be just amazing at it and it yeah. wanna be like, there's no point in me playing golf because you'd win everything. Yeah. Where are you going? No, no, <coughs> no, I'll answer that honestly. No, it does interest me. Um, but Lee doesn't let me play with his balls. <laughs> so when he does <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> like in, in his you know, in the simulator and stuff. When we've got more time for him to teach me and I me to learn, then maybe I will. Or I'll find someone else to teach me because he's not that great, so. And you're pregnant. Oh yeah, and I'm pregnant, so I can't play it in anyway. Um, the second part to his question is, also, what e-liquid are you vaping, ham and mustard? <laughs> no, I love ham and mustard, though. Shocker. Um, <laughs> no, it's um, strawberry and kiwi. Um, so the first part of this question is how long do you think it will be before you're pushing products in viewers faces and rather than just making good videos like the ones we all want? That's not a dig at you by the way, that's a dig at the five I have unsubbed to lately. Hopefully never. But then again, if I had companies putting money in my pocket to use equipment I didn't really rate or enjoy, I would probably say yes. Um, so that's probably a question based around sponsorship. Now, the aim for this channel and the aim for YouTube for me is to, um, <laughs> where are you going? I thought you can't see him. You can't see him. Is to make this a full-time job, but clearly if you've watched the video before, it doesn't give me enough money to make that a possibility. Would I take money if a company came to me to use their products? Yes, I would. You, I mean, if anybody says they wouldn't, they would be stupid um, or lying or have already got enough money to up so it doesn't matter. But it would only be for a company or products that I believed in. So if it was a company or clubs that I thought were good and worked for me, then yes. If it was someone that was just after the promotion um, and their products were crap, then no, I, I wouldn't. Because um, I've always, I wanna base this channel around honesty. So if I'm using something that I don't believe in, then I that goes against my values, but I wouldn't, I'd only accept it if I didn't have to push it into people's faces. So I just used it every day um, and maybe commented and made comment to it every now and then. But I, if I had to push it into someone's face, then no, I wouldn't do it. Good question. Thank you very much, Baz. Hi, Lee. Do you run a business from your studio? Uh, yes and no. 
it will be a golf shop. Um, I am a club fitter for um, Orca and we've just got Callaway in as well. So once the lockdown finishes, then it will become a golf shop and simulator that people can hire out and we'll do club fittings um, and can just buy everyday things. I think club fitting isn't the greatest around here. There are some good places and some good club fitters at certain places, but um, I just want to give people a better experience. That one was from Tony Ban Bonser, by the way. Sorry, Tony, I shouldn't mention that. Uh, next question is from Stephen Treby. Hi Lee, what courses are you, Dan, Lester, looking at laying? Laying? Should that be playing? It's definitely playing, isn't it? Uh, when the course is open again, would like to see some local courses showcased. There's no set plan as of yet, but I know um, because of who Dan's working with within, within the... Um, golf travel industry. We're looking at playing one called the Atlantic Lynx and I'll leave a link in the description. <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description for them, but basically it's the North Devon and North Cornwall Coasts golf courses. So I think it's Travaux, St. Enadoc, Royal North Devon, um, Burnham and Barrow. So I think we want to showcase those ones by traveling uh, between those. So they're local to us. But there's no set plan, but there is something in the pipeline, hopefully later in the year. Do you want to make some more noise? Sorry, I'm just feeding Dreaming. There is something in the pipeline later in the year between me and Dan where we're going to do a challenge, but that's going to be based around whether we can get companies to sponsor it because the expense is going to be quite a lot, but it is going to be charity based for charity. So there'll be more to come on that one. So this one's from Frank Sam Samut. What a name. Some great names, isn't it? Yeah. Um, question for tomorrow, what would be the next purchase that could put you to the next level of blogging? A new assistant, really. Don't get him buying anything else. <laughs> um, purchase, I don't think it was... <laughs> Stop shaking your head. The only thing I'd like to purchase would be a gimbal, um, a DJI Ronin. He's got one. No, I haven't. Not for my camera. But that wouldn't take me to the next level. I think to go to the next level of what I'd want to do is money or accessibility would put me to the next level. To be able to travel to different golf courses and play different golf courses to be able to vlog them. Because because I'm not a PJ Pro, I don't get what's called courtesy of the course, uh, where PJ Pros get courtesy of a golf course. I'd have to pay my way, which I have no problem doing. But in order to get to a stage where I can do that, YouTube needs to earn me more money so I can invest it back into YouTube. So there's no actual real purchase, it's just having more money or more accessibility to golf courses uh, and products that would probably take me to the next level. And unlucky for you, that ain't going to happen because you've got a baby on the way. Well, it's not going to happen because I haven't got enough subscribers or enough reach for it. And all your money's going on, baby. No, it's not. It's going yeah. on golf. It's going on golf. Um, Right, this one's for you. I, this one's from Alex S. Uh, well, it's a two-part question again, so I just forgot your wifey. How many animals do you have? I'm not an animal, so this is actual <laughs> animals. Uh, Boson, Drago, Tommy, Sharon, Julia, Margaret, um, Vanessa, Rosie. So that's eight. Um, and if you count Frida, who's currently a little bird that lives in our extraction fan in the bathroom, which Lee wants to get rid of, and I've said no. She comes back every year, has babies. Um, I don't think they're our animals, though. But she's in our house, yeah. Okay. And I feed her through the vent. So that's nine. Uh, okay, so eight, but nine. But I'd have a lot more. Yeah, she wants a chameleon. A rabbit. A rabbit. She'd literally have a zoo in the garden if I'd let her. A pig. She, she wants she wants to have micro pigs, don't you? But you don't understand that they grow into big fat pigs. And a goat. Right. Anyway. In fact, I want a small holding farm. That's what I want. So what I need is about a million subscribers so I can afford a farm to keep her happy. So uh, just subscribe below and watch every video while you're at it, will you? Please do. <laughs> uh, do you have a rooster in the garden or just hens? We've got just hens, but one of them that thinks that she's a rooster, she cockle doogle doos in the morning, and we don't know why. <laughs> she thinks she's a cockerel.
because chickens aren't meant to do that. Yeah, she's starting to do my head out. She's got an identity problem. <laughs> uh, and how much work is it to have them? Um, what, chickens or, the, or everything? Chickens. Or, uh, or, yeah, well, and, well the, yeah, all of them. Um, the easiest one's Drago, because he's just he's a bearded dragon and they're lazy. Expensive to set up, but um, he's really easy to look after. He'll just sit on your shoulder for hours, won't he? Yeah. And shit on your leg. <laughs> and, yeah, he does poo. Um, Tommy is easy as well. He's just a pain in the bum because he just likes to climb and walk around and be fall out on his back. and fall on his back and whatever. And walk in water and then mud. Yeah, he's just he, he can be a he's a naughty tortoise. <clears throat> um, the chickens, obviously, we get eggs from them, so that's amazing. Expensive to start with, but relatively low maintenance in terms of money. Yeah, you only have to pay for food and you can go to farm shops to get the food from. I think the main issue with chickens is the mess. Yeah, you've got to clean they, them out they, a lot. They crap everywhere. Mm. Um, but they're good for your garden, for grass. They make yeah. your grass amazing. Yeah. Um, so we let them out every now and then to crap everywhere on the grass and then I we like rinse it. it down and it, it nutrients the grass so it turns the grass really green. But cleaning them out can be a bit of a bitch. And Bosun is the most high maintenance because he's like a baby. He's my baby. Yeah, but you baby him. And he's amazing and he's worth it. And I just we just love him. We literally treat him like a child. But he is a human. He identifies as a human. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's cute. Okay, um, the question for me. How did you get in contact with Dan? I messaged him. <laughs> well, I did. Um, I messaged him for a driver for in initially, um, and then we've gone from there. Have you ever met Mr. Crossfield? Nope. Have you ever had a hole in one? Nope. Uh, and an eagle? I've had. You never had a hole in one. I did at American Golf. That was a practice putting thing. It was still a hole in one. Oh dear God. Um, eagles, I've had two. Uh, I don't get them very often. Did you pay for your orcas or are they sponsored? If not, why did you choose them? Um, I did pay for them. I'm an orca stockist, so I obviously paid trade for them. Um, but the reason I chose them is because I was with TaylorMade at the time and the build quality and quality assurance that was taken on those irons was very disappointing. And after getting and meeting Alex and seeing the orca products and getting my clubs back to the specification within a decimal point, um, that's why I chose to use them and I've got no real need or want to change away from them uh, at any time soon to be honest. How many tournaments do you play normally a year? Define tournaments. I play in medals and scrambles and stableforts and uh, competitions at the club but I don't play in any tournaments as such because I just don't have the time really. Uh, and who's your favourite golfer? My wife, because she's amazing at golf. There's just nobody better. Yeah. Um, but when she's not playing golf, it's Rory McIlroy. So, a question from Stefan. Uh, how many times a week do you play golf during a normal season? About six days out of seven. <laughs> um, I'm either playing golf or filming golf with Dan and Lester, or I'm playing golf, and then I give you a Sunday. Unless when he goes golf. on holiday, he plays golf. He goes on holiday to play golf. Well, yeah, because it's a golf holiday. So, yeah. Um, he shits golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll leave the Q&A there then. Okay. So what do you want now? Because people have asked questions about animals. People are interested in our animals, so we should get more. No. Why? Because it's not an animal channel. It's not the Discovery channel. It could be. We probably get more viewers. <laughs> <laughs> we get a chameleon and a rabbit. No. We definitely not getting, need a chameleon. We're not getting more animals because people have asked questions about animals. Sorry. Just a goat. No. A garden. No. Well, okay, you're not allowed to have more golf clubs or more filming equipment until I get a chameleon. I can do what I want. I can do what I want. I'm I was going to get one then. A chameleon. <laughs> Come then. Okay. Come on.
No, no don't, because no. you know I will. Go and get one then. You know I'll buy one. Go and get one then. <laughs> Come on. No. They're going the wrong way for a comedian. We're not letting you pass. The comedian's out the front door. Can I have the money? Oh, there it is, <laughs> look. <laughs> there it is. There's the truth. <laughs>